welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel, hashtag Movie Bay. I am Movie Bay, and in this video, I am going to be doing a review over episodes one through six of season six, Love is Blind. But before I get too into it though, I would like for you to drop down and hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Because here on Movie Bay, I do reviews, reactions, and commentary to movies and television. And if that is the type of content that you like, then you might as well stick around and hit that subscribe button. And if you find yourself enjoying my commentary along the way, don't be afraid to give me a thumbs up and or drop a comment down below. Now, I normally never get through a full season of Love is Blind. I can't get past the pod episodes because a lot of their conversations are just boring to me. However, I saw a comment, not a comment, I saw a video on Instagram that really piqued my interest and I was like, why not? It's Valentine's Day weekend. I don't have a Valentine, so let's watch other people fall in love. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into episodes one through six. How I'm going to be doing it, this review is I'm going to be going by... Um, the primary couples from, you know, just my favorite to like the most juicy dramatic. And then the uh, Honeymoon Villa episode, that's going to be its own separate review. I mean, it's going to be a part of this, but it's going to be at the end. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. So I want to first start off by talking about Ken and Brittany. I really love Ken and Brittany. They're honestly my favorite couple thus far. Um, they're both educators or come from a background of education. They both love God. Amen. And then they both had to grow up fast due to traumatic events in their childhood. And their connection was just so organically organic. It was authentic. And they didn't even mesh with anybody else. They knew that they wanted to talk to each other. They talked to each other. And long story short, Ken end up proposing to uh, Brittany and she said yes. Now, the biggest um issue that they'll have in their relationship is going to be that they're an interracial couple um kenneth is black and britney is white and they don't care about that but we know society right and one thing britney said kind of did like made me like this is how i know it's gonna be a problem is when she said that ken identifies as a black man no ken is a black man <laughs> Ken is a black man, baby. Therein lies the problem. You can't identify as black. That's what you are. Next, let's go ahead and get into the love triangle. One of the many love triangles of this season, um, Matthew, A.D., and Clay. But let's start off with Matthew because Matthew is a handful. Matthew is who I wish I could be in my everyday life. Matthew literally walked out of the pod mid-conversation with people when he wasn't feeling it. Do y'all know how bad I want to walk out on the conversation with people if I'm not feeling it? Like, I feel like Matthew is like my spirit animal. But the problem with Matthew, <laughs> not only is he rude, but he doesn't want to talk about love and feelings and emotions. And I'm like, did you not know you was coming on a love show? Make that make sense. However, there is one lady that Matthew does feel comfortable enough to open up to, and that lady is A.D. Now, when it comes to A.D., she is a what she's calling y'all a fix a hoe like she has to fix men that are broken and honestly when it comes to matthew i understand that because i would have continued to talk to matthew simply for the fact that i feel like he needs somebody to talk to you know what i'm saying like and then i would have ended up having to like break his heart or whatever at the end but i feel like that's honestly why she continued to talk to him was because we knew he needed somebody to talk to, but she, in turn, started falling for him. Now, Matthew isn't the only person that AD has feelings for. She also clicks with a guy named Clay. Now, Clay is like home to her, and that's a good thing and a bad thing. When someone is like home, they're familiar, you're comfortable with them, et cetera, et cetera. However, the bad part about him being home is that he reminds her of a lot of dudes that she used to date in the past. And she's single now, so obviously we don't want the same type of guy. We want a different type of guy. Make sense? Okay. So let's talk about AD and Clay. AD says that, my bad, Clay says that he would not date AD. He would not propose to her if he's not physically attracted to her, despite their mental connection and their spiritual and emotional connection. If he's not physically attracted to her, he's not going to propose. And I'm looking like, that's the whole purpose of Love is Blind. What you thought you came on too hot to handle, baby? Wrong show. This is 
love is blind and no i'm not gonna tell you what i look like because that defeats the purpose of the experiment um on another day um ad tells clay that she has a connection with another person as well and he like blows up at her and i'm i was looking like goodbye because who are you talking to who are you talking to very much so who are you talking to and then he flipped the situation to make it seem where to make it where she ended up crying because would you rather i had like lied and then have you looking like an idiot thinking that you the only person i talk to or whatever or would you rather me be honest and just let you know that hey yo you got some competition you need to step your cookies up period like make it make sense this is a dating show so for you to even think that the person that you have a connection with is only talking to you is ignorant. You know what I'm saying? Like it could I mean, okay if they if they are, if you are the only person, but like realistically, they're talking and having conversations with multiple people cuz that's the point of the show. So, um Clay is very egotistical and I'm happy that she told him because he needed to be knocked down a couple of pegs. He needed to really be humbled in that sense. And while they're on their little break, this is when Matthew and AD uh, strengthen their connection. He talks about asking for her hand in marriage. They talk about her father and, their, and her relationship, how she wasn't close with her father and her father is no longer alive. Um, but here's the problem. Matthew also had that same conversation with another woman and the other woman told AD. So when AD goes back and confronts Matthew, he plays on her intelligence and lies and be like, nah, I didn't say what I said to her when I, that I said to you. What I said was what you said what was a motherfucking lie and I done caught you in it. Like, stop playing with me, bro. Ma uh, Matthew ends up leaving the show. So now AD has no choice but to go back with Clay. But luckily, Clay does apologize for his behavior and that's something that he's working on. And he appreciates that AD held him accountable for his actions and da 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 da, -da. And he ends up uh, proposing to her. Now, when he meets her in person, he is pleasantly surprised. And we'll get into the rest of that later. Actually, no. Let's get into it now. Because on social media, I've been seeing a lot of women, black women in particular, talking about AD. And I have an issue with that. There, I saw one comment in particular say, I would rather D.I.E. before I get on TV and have my hair looking like that. And AD's hair wasn't even bad. It was sticking up at a, at a certain part. It was like her leave out. And it was just like up. It just needs to be brushed. Like, it was nothing bad. And for the fact that y'all acting like y'all ain't never had a bad hair day, hence, baby, I got my hat on right now, like half a hood right now because I'm not liking how my hair is laying. Like, for you to act like your hair is always slayed and laid, you're in denial because I know you lying. Because we didn't all went through the early 2000s, late 2000s when we had sew-ins and quick weeds with our leave-outs out. And our leave-outs wasn't always blending. Like, stop acting like you holier than thou, period. And then for y'all to talk about how she's not cute, she just got a banging body, just because she's not cute to you doesn't mean she's not cute to him. But facts remain the facts. Baby body is banging. Now that we got to get back to later. Another couple, another love triangle, love square is between Jimmy, Jessica, Chelsea, and Trevor. Yes, I'm not going to try. I'm going to try not to spend a lot of uh, time on this, but I do want to talk about Jimmy and Jessica more particularly. So Jimmy and Jessica hit it off immediately. The problem is Jessica has a lot of icks. She doesn't like him blowing his nose. She doesn't like how he cracks his knuckles. She doesn't want him to follow women on Instagram. And it's just like, damn, bitch. <laughs> you still got a lot of things that I can't do. You know what I'm saying? And when Jimmy goes to Chelsea, Chelsea is more laid back and they just have a good time. Make sense? Do we see the difference? Like, you can have a connection with two people, but if one person is constantly nitpicking everything about you, it's going to make you want to go and talk to that other person. So here's the problem. Jimmy is torn, but Jimmy is not sharing his feelings with Jessica. Jessica's pouring her heart out, and she knows that he has a connection with another person, but he's not giving her anything in return, like where his mind is, where his head is at. And in his defense, he said he doesn't want to tell her things 
that he would probably go back and tell the other girl like he doesn't want to game her basically but you're not telling me anything is essentially gaming me too so one thing that i do like about jessica is when it comes to her feelings and her heart she don't play them games and she lets him know like i'm not going to chase you and right now i feel like i'm chasing you and i don't do that so what i'm going to do is i'm gonna fall back and i'm gonna let you get your thoughts together because you ain't never gonna make me feel like this ever again ever period and i was like and that's that on that, it's giving me. <laughs> it's giving me. However, after Jessica then blew up on his ass, <laughs> Jimmy goes to Chelsea. And where Jessica was rah, 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 Chelsea was like, what's wrong? Talk to me. And then he ends up opening up to Chelsea. Do we see the difference here? Do we see the difference? And it's so eye-opening because I'm not going to hold you. I see a lot of myself in Jessica. Not when it comes to like blowing your nose and stuff like that, like little stuff like that. I'm going to talk about like when it comes to me being hard. I feel like, and Jessica said this too, like she is a lot of woman. And baby, I can relate. So let's go ahead and get into this part. Jimmy ends up telling Chelsea that, she love, that he loves her. And Jessica hears about it. So she goes in and what essentially is their last date. And Jimmy lets her know... Um, you know, that he's going to go with his second option. And Jessica goes off on his ass. And she's like, you know what? You had me second guessing myself. Like, maybe I am too much. Maybe I need to calm down. Maybe I need to change who I am. And I realized that I don't need to do that. Okay, Jessica. And I'm happy that I watched the show because you showed me something about myself. And hopefully if you see this boo, I can show you something about yourself if you haven't learned it already. Don't change who you are. But you do need to tweak who you are because she went off on him she was like i'm not gonna call to you i'm not gonna hold your hand through your feelings it's something you need to figure out by yourself however i guess like as a woman and as a partner when it comes to men they already have a hard time expressing their feelings and emotions and stuff so that is something that we should be able to be patient not patient i ain't gonna say patient because you're gonna be waiting for forever but understanding and like help them try to figure out versus like saying you need to figure it out by yourself maybe assist him and i ain't gonna really say baby him because clay kept saying that and i hate that word i'm a big baby like you a grown ass man stop playing with me but it's i can't think of the word i just think like coax i feel like that was a good a good word to use um but aside from that i'm happy she stood up for herself long story short uh jimmy chooses chelsea he proposes to her and Chelsea cuts it off with Trevor, who I honestly think that she had a better connection with Trevor. I feel like the reason Chelsea chose Jimmy is because Chelsea has, and she said this too, that she's used to men being mean to her and now you got two men vying for your attention. And the fact that Jimmy chose her over another girl who she knows is a really pretty girl. Jimmy doesn't know that, but she knows that. I feel like she thinks that she needed to win. That is why she chose Jimmy over Trevor. That's my personal opinion on that. Um, so let's go ahead and get to the villa. I want to continue with Jimmy and Chelsea. Jimmy and Chelsea. <laughs> because they're like the highlight of this show. They, they honestly are. I mean, there's some things that... Uh, I'm also going to go live after I post this. There's some things about AD and Clay that we can talk about, you know, saying that um, she doesn't think that she deserves love and he's, you know, his delivery is very harsh. But um, let's continue with Jimmy and Chelsea. So their whole time in the villa, Chelsea is literally asking for a confirmation like, what do you like about me? Do you think I'm pretty? Are you happy? Like, it's so insecure. And she keeps saying she's not insecure. And it's not coming from a place of insecurities, but it is. And the moment you stop denying that, the moment we can start working on how to fix it. Okay? So she's constantly asking for reassurance from Jimmy, um, making sure that he made the right choice, et cetera, et cetera. But also, I think Jimmy is trying to talk himself into the fact that he made the right choice because he keeps saying, but it's not about looks, but I don't care about how you look. It doesn't matter about looks, though. Looks doesn't matter, but it's like both of them, both the both of them are trying to convince themselves that they made the right choice. Um, 
when all the couples meet, this is going to be probably the last thing I talk about, because when all the couples meet, this is when things start to get juicy. Because I was waiting on it. I was like, okay, everybody going to sleep, waking up together. Woo, 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 woo. I need some drama. Here goes the drama. <sighs> AD has a banging body. And Jimmy notices and he tells Chelsea, AD is stacked. And Chelsea laughs it off, and she's like, AD, girl, you look so good. How do you get a body like that type thing, right? However, we know, dramatic irony, we know that Chelsea is mad and secure about this. And I feel like, Jimmy, where you messed up was if y'all haven't built that rapport, then you shouldn't, like, joke like that or even tell your significant partner that. And she's been dropping gems that she's mad insecure, bro. You sh he messed up by saying that to her. He should have just kept that thought in his head. However, he went over to AD and he like apologized and he was like, it was all out of respect, I swear. And then they just continued to talk. And this really, really makes Chelsea sick to her stomach, literally. Now, I could see, excuse me, I could see both sides because the conversation was about each other's partners. Like, are you happy? I found love. Y'all look good together. Da, 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 da. But parts of the conversation were flirty too. You know what I'm saying? Like, not from AD's stance. Like, I think she did a decent job playing it off. But um, you messed up, Jimmy. You messed up, Jimmy. Another thing, because this is going around on social media, is the over-sexualization of AD. Now, AD does have a banging body, but Britney has a banging body too. Both women are beautiful. Both women are have beautiful, curvaceous bodies. However, AD is the only one that is getting talked about. They're talking about her butt. Um, Laura made a joke that her fiance should bean dip her breast, like, Go like that to her boob. Like, why would you even want your fiance to touch another girl? Oh, what? Like, why would you even want that? Why would you even joke about that? And my whole point is, I don't think it's a far stretch to say that they are over-sexualizing AD because it is a historical fact that black women are over-sexualized, period. I went to school for it. Don't think that I'm doing too much. I literally studied this, okay? Like, ever since pre-slavery, Black women have been over-sexualized. During slavery, black women have been over-sexualized. In the media today, black women are over-sexualized. And on this show, you can really tell because we got two women, beautiful, curvaceous women in Britney and in AD, but everybody is only talking and trying, talking about gawking at and physically, talking about physically touching AD. Why? Made that make sense to me. Um, a lot of other things did happen. I love Laura and Jimmy. They're so adorable. However, I knew that their downfall was going to be the same thing that attracted themselves to each other. Their sense of humor. Um, going back to the bean dip conversation, uh, one person plays too much with the other person. I also like Ken and AD's conversation about interracial relationships because that is going to be probably the biggest milestone that, um, that comes between Ken and Brittany. Um, but I really, really love Ken and Brittany. Like, she was talking about how he had her shoes out for him. And he brought her a chair over to sit with the girls. And, oh, he's just a good man. And I think that she does cater back to him. So I hope that, surprisingly, y'all, if y'all know me, y'all know me. But I hope that they do work out, whatever they're going to go through. Um, the last six episodes are going to air um, on the 21st of February. So I will be back that weekend to do a review. However, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to stay tuned because I am going to go live where we can talk about these couples more in depth because I didn't want this review to be too, too long, okay? And of course, I want to hear y'all thoughts and opinions per usual. So thank y'all so much for tuning in. Once again, don't forget to hit that like button. Drop your thoughts and opinions down below. What did y'all think about Matthew? What did y'all think about the love triangle between Jessica, Jimmy, and Chelsea? And what do y'all think about um, people over-sexualizing AD's body? Thank y'all so much for tuning in. And I'll see y'all next time. Whoa. Bye. <laughs>